One of my most favorite US coin designs is the Mercury Dime. So I called up my silver dealer to see if he had any, and he said he had a bunch of them. So I bought them all. Hey everyone, it's Rob Finds Treasure, and welcome back to the channel. Holy cow, I have, what is it, $163.30 face value of mercury dyes my silver dealer said he got a big bag of them uh brought into his store a big canvas bag and so he doesn't know if they've been searched or not he didn't search them but before he did anything with them he called me up with a picture and said do you want these and i said i absolutely will take them and uh yeah i took them got a pretty decent deal considering how well silver's done lately only 20 times face on this big lot of mercury dimes 1630 dimes should be in this bag based upon the face value now for the mercury dime series there's three key dates the 1916 denver the 1921 philly and the 1921 denver i'm not expecting to find any of those dates in this bag maybe if we're super lucky we'll get one of the 21s in tough shape i'll take that but i'm not expecting to find those three there's two better dates as well, the 26S and the 31D. We could get lucky and score one or two of those. That'd be kind of cool. And then, of course, I'll keep my eye out for the super rare varieties, the 1942 Philly, 42 or 41, overdate. The 42 Denver, 42 or 41, overdate. And the 1945S Micro S. The problem with the Micro S, I'll probably find a couple in the bag, to be honest. But unless it's in mint state or higher, it really doesn't add any extra value. But I'll still keep an eye out for it. And then finally, I don't talk about it too much. But I'm going to keep an eye out for the 1919 DDO. It's one of the major class, I guess, class one double dies out there. It's not well known about. But it's very easy to see, even on worn examples. And there's a ton of other many micro varieties that I don't have listed on my mat. Because it's pretty hard to see that kind of doubling in RPMs on really heavily circulated mercury dimes. I digress. I've talked a lot. Let me go ahead now and dump out the bag. We'll see what it looks like on the mat. It's probably going to cover this mat and it's going to take me a long time to do the pre-sort. I think for time, I'm just going to go ahead and sort it by teens, 20s, 30s, and 40s. And even though doing the decades first, then going back and doing it by year and mint takes a lot longer, I do want to get a good idea of how many teens and 20s are in this bag because typically when you buy mercury dime lots it's a lot of 30s and 40s and based on the picture my silver dealer showed me when i was looking through the bag i saw a lot of teens and 20s which is why i really wanted this bag in the first place all right let me get the camera set up here let's dump out the bag and see what it looks like Wow, we even had one run away. That, my friends, is a pile, and I mean a pile, of Merc Dines. I have hunted 3,000 Mercury Dines from a bucket one time from the same dealer, and I hunted it, and I thought we might have had a 16D, but uh, yeah, I've kept that dime to the side. Got a nice hole in the dime right here. I like that. It's kind of cool. Anyway, looks pretty good. I don't see anything looking BU. I do see a lot of polished ones you're gonna find that in old silver but i don't see a lot of really high grade ones i mean the ones that are in decent shape with decent uh details all look like they're probably polished there's probably not going to be many if any higher grade examples in here and i say high grade as an au or better there's probably some xfs and some vfs and things like that but let me get them sorted if i happen to run across anything on the top here before I finish the sword, I'll bring it back. Of course, I'll be checking these at the end of the video when I have them segregated to see if we have any other varieties. All right, it's gonna be a while. I'll be back with an update soon. An eternity later. Well, it's been a few hours and we've got all of the dimes sorted by decade. Quite a lot in the teens, a lot of 1916, so I can't wait to flip them over to see if any have the Denver mint mark. That'd be a miracle, but it'd be nice. These are all the 20s. Now, I'll tell you, I saw a lot of 26s, but I did not see any 21s, but there's so many of these 20s. 
where when you look at the date, you can see the first three digits easy, but the last digit was tough. And as soon as I saw a 192, I toss it in the 20. So it's possible there's 21s, but I doubt it. I didn't see any from just looking through it as I was going through it. And man, the 20s are overfilling. These are all of the 30s right here. Not a lot of 30s, probably about equal in the 30s and the 20s. So I was kind of uh, surprised at that. And then a whole bunch in the 40s, but these are the 1942s. And I didn't look on the back to see if they were D, S, or P. I just put them all in here for now. I'll be scoping all of the Phillies and Denvers to see if we have any of the overdates. And then finally, we have a whole bunch of uh, damaged coins. We have five really damaged coins Three that have holes in them. Uh, five nice, or nicer, I should say. They're not exactly mint state, or if they are, they're barely a mint state, but they're definitely AU looking coins. There's five of them. That was the best five coins of the uh, bunch as far as condition. And then there's even two Roosevelts in there from the 50s. A 1954 Denver, and I believe a 56. Yeah, 1956 Denver. So a couple of Rosies made their way into it. Not mad about that. They're in decent shape. What's next to do is I've got to start going through all of these. I'm going to put all of the teens in order. 16, 17, 18, 19, PD, and S. See if we have any 16 Ds. And then I'm going to take the best one of all of the dates, as in PD and S and teen dates, and show you the master set we're kind of creating for the best ones. And to compare them to my album to see if any upgrade. Let me get those done. I'll bring you back in after the teens are sorted by date and mint. All right, we've got the teens sorted. 16 P and S, 17 P D and S, 18 P D and S, and 19 P D and S. There were two Ds. They're already in my master sets that I'm creating. I'll tell you, it was fun flipping over a bunch of these 16s and seeing a mint mark. Unfortunately, all were San Francisco. These are the two sets I've got together. We've got 16 P's, no D's, of course, and then 16 S's, and then the 17 P, D, and S, 18 P, D, and S, and 19 P, D, and S. The top set is the nicest one. The bottom set is the second nicest one. And we see how far along we can get and do this all the way through 1945, of course. Obviously, we're gonna be missing the D's for 16. Obviously, we were missing the 21s and things like that, but it'd be nice to get two as close as possible sets put together with decent enough coins that an album would be okay to house them in. All right, teens are done. That took a while. Moving on to the 20s. So I've got the 20s done. Unfortunately, there were no 1921 Philly or Denver dimes. And honestly, I thought it was weird. There's also no 1928 Denvers. I know they're a lower mintage, but they're not much lower than the 1929S. We've got a stack of them. It's a bummer though, because we won't have a complete a backup set other than the key dates, because we are missing that one. Even though it's a better date, we still should have found one in that big of a sample. To the extent, I need to go through this now and pull out the best first and second sets. Get them in the uh, tubes I have up here, and I'll bring it back after I've got the first and second best sets laid out so you can see the nicer dimes. All right, we've got all the 20s Mercury dimes into two different subsets. Obviously, up here up top, we've got all the 1920s, and even though this one has some damage, the uh, detail's pretty good, and the damage is contained on the rim, so I'm going to keep that as the better of the two. So 1920 PDNS, no 21 P or D. 23 P and S, there was no Denver ones minted. All the 24s, P, D, and S, two sets. 25 P, D, and S, 26 P, D, and S on the top set, but no second S. And the 26 S was one I was looking for. I thought we'd find it, we did. It's not in the best shape, but still good to find one. We've got the 27 P, D, and S, but not a Denver second one for the second set. We've got the 1928 P and S, no Denvers and then 29 PDNS. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and put these back into the tubes, first set, second set, and then move on to the 30s. We'll see if we can grab a 31D. I don't recall seeing any 1931s in there, but we'll have to see if there is any. Let me get this set up in the tubes, get that done, and I'll bring you guys back once I've done that. We have finished the 30s. The big winners were the 1936 Philly and the 1939 Denver. The good news is we had all of the 39s, 38s only had 138S, which is kind of odd because 38S is not really that much of a 
better date. It has just under 10 million minted. I think under 9 million minted. So should have seen more than that, but we didn't. We got all of the 37s, all the 36s, all the 35s. Of course, 1934 only had P and D. Like I said, no 31s. They're all better dates, technically. 31D being the toughest. And then in 1930, there's only Philly and San Francisco. We only had one 1930 San Francisco. So we'll be able to add some more dimes to both the rolls. I need to go through them really quick. Pull out the best ones. I'll lay them out here for you guys. I'll take a look at them. And then I'll move on to the 40s. And all I'm going to do is try to get the best looking 40 PDNS through 45 PDNS. And then the final thing will be go through all the 42s, P's and D's to see if we have possibly any overdates. I'll be back in just a moment after I finish the sort. All right, here's all the 30s. Like I said, we only are missing the 30S from the second set, all the 31s from both sets. And I forgot I had a pretty nice dime that I pulled aside that was a 1938S, so I used it for the first set and put the only one we had earlier in the second set. So I'm gonna get these into those rolls now. Pretty much are getting close to having a full dime set on the first set other than a couple of coins and then a few extra coins more than that on the second set. Plus that's all the teens, 20s and 30s in the bags. This is gonna take forever, but I'm only gonna go through there until I have really nice examples of 40 through 45. Like I said, I'm not gonna sort them all. That'll take all day. I'm just gonna look for the best of the coins. And once I plug them on the board and I have all of them filled in, I'll bring it back. We'll get them in the rolls. And then I'll begin the variety hunt for the 42s. All right, I've gone through all the 40s, added the rest of my 30s and 40s to this jar. Of course, those are the bags from today's search as well. 1940 PDNS, 41 PDNS, 42s, 3s, 4s, and 5s. And these are the nicest ones overall. They may not have the most shine to them, but they definitely have good detail. All of them are respectable in their own manner. So anyway, that'll be added to the rolls. I do want to point out, though, I did find four 1945 S's that were the micro S's. I'll go ahead and show that on the screen there. There's the micro S. And if I grab another 45 and put it next to it, you'll be able to see the differences in the two S's. So 45 S on top, the regular one, and the micro S is on the bottom. So I figured since I'm making these into a couple sets, might as well go ahead and grab a couple of the nicer ones down here, probably these two, and I'll make those be micro S's along with S's as well. So now we have two full sets right there. I'll add them to the rolls. I'll come back with some final thoughts on this hunt, and even though we didn't score any major varieties, no 42 over 41s, no 16Ds or 21s, still a fun hunt, but let me get these into the rolls and I'll bring you back with some final thoughts. All right, we have finished making a couple of subsets here. Now there are 77 Mercury Dimes in the entire series, not including major varieties like the 42 or 41s or the Micro S. So we had 70 of the 77 Mercury Dimes for set one and 65 of the 77 for set two. And the reason why there's a plus one is I've added a micro S as a bonus. So you have one of the major varieties that most Mercury Dime albums house or ask for. So there you go, 71 out of 78 if you include it and 66 out of 78 if you include it. And obviously we could have made more sets because I have a lot more dimes here, but they would have continually gotten smaller and smaller and smaller. And so I think these two sets are pretty collectible and they were the best dimes from every year in mint. This is the first best ones and the second best ones. So they have a little more value than just buying a roll and a half or two rolls of mercury dimes. That being said, it was a lot of fun. I am surprised we only had two items from the hit list. We really didn't have any dimes from 1931 whatsoever. And even though 31D is a better date, the other 31s should have been able to be found, but obviously they just weren't in there. And that just goes to show you that when you buy a big lot of even unsearched dimes, like this was unsearched for my silver dealer, it probably was searched at some point and uh, we got the residual. I'll take what we got though, because we got lots of nicer dimes to add to the collection and or add to somebody else's collection. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this Mercury Dime Hunt. If you did, I certainly would appreciate that thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting and thanks for watching.